Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This video is about how to build your own bicycle wheel, or specifically, in my case, this wheel here. So this is a 20-inch, 36-spoke, two-cross spoke pattern wheel that I've put together for a project I'm working on, uh, and you can look at details and videos of that project on my channel if you're interested. Now, I am an amateur wheel builder. This is the first one I've ever built, so the purpose of this video is to take you through the research that I did to work out how to build a wheel, uh, and hopefully save you some time in doing that yourself if you are indeed yourself an amateur wheel builder. Now, the advantages of building your own wheel, of course, are that you can choose your own rim, your own spokes and your own hub, and mix and match accordingly to get the wheel that you want. In this video I'm not using any specialist tools or equipment, so hopefully this will help other amateur wheel builders to produce something which is workable and useful as a bicycle wheel. So if there are any professional wheel builders who are watching this video and sucking their teeth at all the mistakes that I've inevitably made, then please leave any comments in the comment section down below so that I'll know what to do better next time, uh, and so will my viewers for that matter. So sit back and watch the video, this is how I did it. So let's start to unbox some of the goodies. The first thing I've got here is the rim. So this came from Ginkgo Bello Tyler. It's a Kinlin TL21 rim with 36 spoke holes. The next box is even more exciting. This is the rear hub. This is a Shimano Nexus 8 speed hub. Um, it is the SGC 6001 8C variant. This is the coaster brake version, so back pedal brake if you like. Um, 36 spoke holes of course to match the rim. So the final component that you need for making your wheels of course is the spokes. And these came from londonspokes.com with their compliments. I have to say I ordered these and they arrived within well, less than 48 hours later, so incredible. Uh, the spokes are 158 millimeters, so actually quite tiny, much smaller than you would think, but uh, with a large diameter hub and a small diameter rim, of course, the spokes are not that large. And also in the pack comes the aluminium nipples, which will connect the spokes to the rim. Once we've sourced our rim and our hub, the next thing we need to do is to take some measurements to enable us to calculate the length of the spokes that we need. So here's the cross section of the rim, this is the outside diameter and this is the inside diameter but the bit that you're really interested in is the effective rim diameter or ERD and this is the diameter of the rim measured across the tops of the opposing spoke nipples. Sometimes that can be a little tricky to measure in reality so it can be calculated from effective rim diameter equals the internal diameter plus 4 millimeters, or a 2 millimeter allowance for the height of each spoke nipple. Sometimes you can calculate or measure the rim depth to help you calculate the effective rim diameter and that's the rim depth shown here. Once you've measured the effective rim diameter moving across to the hub these are the key dimensions that you're going to need to measure or obtain. The first one is the over lock nut dimension which is the distance between the outside faces of the lock nuts on the axle and then distances A, B and C effectively measure the position of the flanges with respect to the lock nuts. The final dimension you need moving around to the end view of the hub is the pitch circle diameter of the spoke holes which is this dimension shown here. Once you've got all those dimensions the next thing you need to do is to calculate the length of the spokes. Fortunately there are quite a number of online spoke length calculators that you can use. The best one that I found is this one kstoets.com and I'll put the link in the description. This one is good because it has a database of hubs and rims so coming across to the hubs tab then I found my Shimano Nexus hub here. I couldn't find my rim in the database so I can use my measurements for that but I can add my hub from the bench and then enter the dimensions for the effective rim diameter which in my case is 378 millimeters. Um, the drilling offset is the offset of the holes in the rim so this is for my rim about one millimeter left and right doesn't make a huge amount of difference really. Um, the center flange distance and the flange pitch circle diameter are pulled in from the hub database so you don't need to enter that. In my case I've got 36 spokes so I'll enter that. I'm using a two cross pattern left and right so I enter two there. Um, there's no hub offset so I want my hub to be centered on the rim so I'll leave that as zero. 
If I then press calculate, it spits out the relevant dimensions in the top right here. So the spoke length for me, 157.6 left, 156.8 right. Um, that rounds up to 158 and 157, close enough. Um, and the other details are given down there, which you can see. Um, helpfully, it gives you a graphical view of the left and right hand side spoking pattern. So when you're lacing the wheel yourself, you can refer to that diagram if you get confused. So on the basis of this, I ordered 158 millimeter spokes. Better for them to be slightly long than slightly short. The first thing I'm going to do is stick a little bit of tape by the valve hole in the rim, just so you can see where that is. So here's the hub. This is the drive side. This is where the drive sprocket is going to go. So this is the drive side flange, and this is the non-drive side flange with the brake lever. So I'm going to start by inserting the spokes into the drive side. These will be the tension spokes or the trailing spokes. These are the one that will take the torque, transmit it from the sprocket to the rim. So we're going to start with inserting the tension spokes on the drive side. Four piles of nine spokes in each. So there are going to be four trailing spokes drive side, four trailing spokes non-drive side, four leading spokes drive side and four leading spokes non-drive side. In the interests of aesthetics and good taste, I'm going to make sure that the logo on the hub lines up with the valve hole in the rim. So that's going to dictate where we put the spokes in the holes. Another thing to look out for is that the spoke holes in the rim are slightly offset to the left and the right hand side or the non-drive side and the drive side. Uh, so next to the valve hole, the first hole after it, or before it, I suppose you would say, the first hole before it is on the non-drive side the next one is moved slightly towards the drive side and so on, so they alternate. I've also read that you should put a little dab of grease onto the threads of the spokes. So I'm using a bit of castrol for this, I'm not going to go overboard. Just dipping them all into the grease, just to give them a, a light greasing. Just wipe the excess off. Okay, I'm going to start with the drive side spokes. The trailing spokes go in first and they go with their heads out. So the heads being that bit on the end of the spoke, so the heads need to be on the outside of the flange, which means we feed the spokes through from the outside of the flange. I've marked up the position of the key spoke. This will ensure that the logo on the inside of the hub is aligned with the valve hole in the rim. Right, so I'm gonna start by putting the first nine spokes in. In goes the key spoke and I miss a hole, put the next one in. Eight, nine. Okay, so what we now do is take the key spoke, which is this one. I'm just gonna tighten up the vise to hold that securely in place. And the key spoke, in this case, because the holes are offset left and right in the rim, the key spoke goes in the first hole towards the right away from the valve. So. That hole there is for a left hand spoke and this hole is for a right hand or drive side spoke. So that's the one that the key spoke goes through. In it goes. The first one is easy because I can just screw the nipple on from the outside like so. I'm just going to leave a few screw threads showing. Right then the next one also hopefully equally easy. I miss four holes in the rim, so one, two, three, and it goes in the fourth. Um, yeah, all right, so I missed three holes and it goes in the fourth. And so, next one. One, two, three, into the fourth. Okay, so that's all the drive side trailing spokes in. Looks like that's working okay. If I just take it out of the clamp, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but uh, maybe if I put that out of the way. The Nexus logo is visible through the valve hole, so the hub is oriented in the correct position. Okay, now that I've got the first side spokes in, the drive side trailing spokes, I need to put the non-drive side trailing spokes in. 
because of the design of this rim and the way that the holes are offset to the left and the right, the first non-drive side trailing spoke has to go into the hole on the non-drive side flange that is between the head of the key spoke and that hole there. So there's a corresponding hole on the other side that's about here, uh, and the spoke will go into that hole from the inside and end up in the hole which is just next to the valve hole, which is marked by the tape. Just to explain that in a little bit more detail, if we take the end view of the hub and tilt it slightly, you can see that the drive side holes are offset from the non-drive side holes. So if I turn the hub over, I'll crack on doing the non-drive side trailing spokes. Okay, so that's the hole I need. So heads out. There's the valve hole. The valve hole's there, so it's got to go into that hole there. If you unwind the wheel a little bit so that the spokes aren't trailing, then you can screw the nipple on relatively easily. I'm just going to work my way around the rim, put the remaining nine spokes in. Okay, so that's all the non-drive side trailing spokes in. Yeah, right. So what we should have, if I've done this right, is 18 spokes adjacent to each other like this on the rim, two spare holes between each one, and each spoke on the non-drive side should be one behind the, the equivalent on the drive side. So I can now think about the leading spokes on the drive side. The leading spokes are the ones that are angled forwards and they would be in compression if you could compress a spoke as the torque from the sprocket is applied to the wheel. Uh, now we can start with any hole, it doesn't really matter. These have to go through from the inside. So heads in, spoke outside the flange like that. Now this is a two cross spoking pattern, so what that means is that each spoke crosses over two others. Um, so this is the first one, it goes on the outside of that spoke, and then it will go on the inside of the next spoke. So if I can just put that around there, then we miss a hole on the rim, and it goes into the next hole here. Just going to tighten this up a few turns. I'll continue doing that with the remaining eight leading spokes on the drive side. Okay, so I've got all the drive side leading spokes in. Uh, so the pattern is over a spoke, under a spoke, miss a hole on the rim and then into the next hole. So I'm just going to go around and check that I've got that right and haven't put any spokes in the wrong holes or got the crossover pattern wrong. Not sure it's actually critical whether the uh, trailing spokes are head in or head out but what you've got to do is start with the spokes that have their heads out otherwise you can't get the other spokes around and under if you see what I mean. Anyway while I've been doing that I've been so engrossed in it that my tea's gone cold. Uh, I'm still going to drink it though. So now I'm going to flip the wheel over one last time hopefully uh, and fit the non-drive side leading spokes. And I'm going to do that, I think, in exactly the same way as I've just done the other side. It's the same pattern. This is the last spoke going in. There we go, done it. Right, so that's all my spokes in. I'll go around and check they're correct, but I'm pretty sure they are, because I was quite careful as I did it. Um, right, what I'm going to do now is just tighten all the nipples up so that the threads on the spokes just disappear into the nipples. And I think when I've done that, I'll probably call it a day for today. Now I can start thinking about tensioning the spokes. And the first thing to do is to slightly bend them back because as the spokes leave the hub on the outer side there, 
slightly curved so I'm going to go around and just push those in a little bit to start to bend them into the right shape before I start tensioning them up more fully. Now that I've got my wheel truing stand set up I can start working on the truing of the wheel itself. So what we have to consider is the vertical truing which is the amount by which the rim is out from the hub in that direction got the lateral truing which is the lateral sideways displacement of the rim uh, then we've got the dishing which is effectively the amount by which the wheel dishes out um, and we want the rim central between the two lock nuts there and to test that I'm going to be using the dishing stick that I made uh, and finally we've got the spoke tensioning to get right so what I'm going to be doing is working on the lateral and vertical offset or displacement to start with um, and then look at the dishing and I'm going to be working on the worst of those at the time. So I'll start with the vertical truing, then the lateral truing, then the dishing uh, and then I'll repeat the process until we're spot on. And finally I'll look at the tensioning and the stress relieving of the wheel. But I'm just going to check roughly what the lateral and vertical runout is and what the dishing is at this point. So I'm going to start with the dishing. So here's me dish stick. I'm just going to put the ends of the dish stick over the rim, bring the probe so it touches the outside of the lock nut and finger tighten those. Then I'm going to move it over to the other side. I've got the probe pressing against the lock nut but you can see the rocking of the dish stick there. Um, so there's about five millimetre gap between the end of this thing and the rim. Uh, so what that's telling me is that the whole wheel is too much in that direction by about three or four millimetres. What we want is the rim to be precisely central between the lock nuts on the left and the right hand side. So that's something I'm going to have to adjust by tightening the spokes on this side. There's not much point proceeding further until I've done something to roughly sort that out. But just for interest, I'm going to check the lateral run out of the wheel. This test indicator reads in millimetres. I'm just going to do this roughly at this point. So I'm going to hold that in place with my hand. So if I rotate the wheel, you can see the dial moving. So at this point, we're not too bad. The lateral run out is about one or two millimetres, which is pretty close at this stage in the game. So let's move it around and check the vertical run out. It's only approximate since this is moving around in the frame a bit because I haven't got the lock nuts but the vertical run out is to all intents and purposes nothing at the moment about 0.1 or 0.2 millimetres so that's not my problem my problem at this stage is the dishing of the wheel so I'm going to get that sorted out so starting at the valve hole I'm going to tighten every spoke on this side by one whole turn of the spoke nipple OK, so I've gone all the way around the wheel. I can feel the tension starting to come on some of the spokes, but not all of them. So I'll test the dishing again with my dish stick, see if that's made any discernible difference. But it's made a tiny bit of a difference because I can feel it rocking on this side slightly, so it has opened up a gap, but I'm going to repeat the process. Right. So I've gone round on the left hand spokes and I've tightened them probably a total of two complete turns and um, when I measured that I found that the wheel had gone a little bit too far so I've now gone around the right hand side of the wheel and tightened these spokes by half a turn uh, and if I check my dishing stick just putting it on the left hand side here it's pretty much touching here here and here and on this side on the right hand side the brake side there's a movement of a probably two millimetres. So I need to do a little bit more tightening on this side to bring it over. But before I do that, I'm going to check the lateral and vertical offset to see where we are there. Again, I'm just holding this by hand at the moment because it's not got to the stage where I'm doing the final tweaking. So if I give the wheel one complete turn. Got a run out of, I don't know, one and a half millimetres, something like that. Just doing it by eye. It's not too bad. Let's check the vertical offset. OK, 
again hardly hardly anything to worry about about 0.2 millimeters total offset so that's not too bad I'm going to leave that for now and work on the lateral offset I think but before I do that I'm just going to bring the dishing back into even better alignment because that at the moment is a problem that's worse than the lateral offset so let's try and sort that out so I've been working on tensioning and truing the wheel for a number of days now on and off and I'm getting close to where I want to be um, so the approach I've been using is to rotate the wheel in the stand check on the axial runout, the radial runout and also at the same time checking the offset left and right uh, and I've been working on correcting the worst of those at the time so for example if the axial runout is the worst one, I've been working on that, trying to get that pretty close, then moving to the radial runout and then moving to the wheel offset and gradually repeating the process until I've got the wheel more or less where I want it to be. Now having been doing that for a while, checking the axial runout now, um, I'm within about 0.2 millimetres, so that's probably within tolerance, but I'll see if I can get it a little bit better. In terms of the radial runout or the sort of offset of the wheel in that direction, um, it's pretty much spot on, maybe 0.1 mil out there or thereabouts. Again, well within tolerance, but uh, let's see how close I can get it. And in terms of the offset, obviously every time you adjust the spokes, um, the offset changes a little bit, so I've been trying to keep that under control as well. And I'm pretty much there, so the centre of the rim is now centred between the two uh, lock nuts. So I've got my dial test indicator pointing at the wheel rim here, or indeed touching the wheel rim. As I said before, you can just use a pointer or a stick, you don't necessarily need a DTI for this job. Um, but if I rotate the wheel around, if you watch the dial here, then it's moving between about minus 0.1, or a bit more, and plus 0.1 millimetres. So the total run out is about 0.2 millimetres. Uh, that's hardly detectable with the naked eye, but uh, I reckon I can improve it a bit. The low spot is about here, so if I tighten these two, three spokes on this side of the wheel, maybe slightly loosen them off on the other side of the wheel, then that will bring the rim over a bit. Uh, and similarly for the high spot on the other side, which is about, about there, uh, I'm going to tighten the spokes on this side of the wheel and slightly loosen them on the other side of the wheel. Uh, and if I loosen them by the same amount that I tighten them, then hopefully that will mean that the, uh, the radial run out of the wheel will be unaffected. I've got to the stage where I'm just making very fine adjustments to the spokes, so maybe an eighth of a turn or even a sixteenth of a turn at a time just to gradually bring the wheel into position. I've been keeping an eye on the tension of the spokes as well, so uh, if the spokes are all a little bit loose then I've been gradually going around the whole wheel uh, and tightening them up a little bit until the spokes are getting to a reasonable amount of tension. Uh, I haven't got a tension gauge so I'm doing this kind of by eye or by ear you could say, by plucking the spoke you get a sense of how tight that spoke is and by comparing that note with the spokes on a similarly sized wheel then you know when you're getting pretty close and if I just put my thumb and fingers on the spokes like this give them a bit of a pull I can feel that that tension is really there and that feels like a, a normal wheel so if I had the professional kit I'd be doing it much more precisely but I haven't um, but I think I'm getting close and I'm more or less happy with where I am at this point I'm down to about 0.1 millimetres run out. The high point's here, so maybe I can pull that over just slightly, but I think I'm going to call that a day. 0.1 mil is pretty good. I'm sure a professional wheel builder would be disappointed with that, but I'm not a pro. Uh, I can't see it with my naked eye, so that's good enough for me. So the final thing is to check I've got all the spokes at a reasonable level of tension. Now clearly if I adjust any one spoke it's going to upset the trueness of the wheel. So I'm just going to go around, do a bit of plucking. Having done that I don't think there's any particularly loose spokes. Um, and also another thing I've done to ensure the seating of the spokes in the holes um, is just go around and give them a, a bit of a bend like that. So that's taking out any spring in the spokes and hopefully that means that the spokes won't stretch as they bed into their into their holes in the in the hub. I've now got my trude wheel and I'm going to give it a few spins so you can see what it's looking like.
the, the run out that is just about measurable on the DTI is most certainly not visible to the naked eye, not to my eye at any rate. Um, so that looks like a pretty good wheel, hopefully successful, the spokes are all nicely tensioned and I think that will do the job. Ah, tea's gone cold. So the wheel truing is done, now the next bit is to fit the rim tape. So this is 22mm rim tape for a 20 inch wheel. I'm just going to squidge that with my thumb to get it in the centre of the channel in the rim. Valve holes still lined up which is good. Okay, let's get a tyre on this bad boy. So there you go, if you've managed to stick to the end of this rather long video then thank you for your patience and your perseverance. I uh, hope you found it useful. Please leave any comments and questions in the questions box down below. They're always good to read and I'll try and respond where appropriate. Um, and if you want to look at my other videos on the tilting Venomobile project that I've been working on that this wheel is for, then please check out my channel further. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're interested. It all helps and it gives me the encouragement to continue making videos like this. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.